Hey everyone, it's Friday, March 27th. Let's talk PlayStation. So before we get into our main topic via the thumbnail and title of this video, let's cover up some smaller news stories that happened this past week, like remasters. Remasters were kind of a thing this past week. Uh, right after LTPS last week, it was announced God of War 3 Remastered coming to PlayStation 4, 1080p, 60 frames per second. Um, it's going to have a photo mode. I'm assuming, you know, increased textures, detail, stuff like that. They're going to, you know, pretty the game up, which is funny because God of War 3, even to this day, looks absolutely incredible. And that's always a game I tell people uh, when it comes to, you know, uh, consoles and graphics or just graphics in general. It's like, look at PS3 and God of War 3. That game still holds up amazingly well. That game looks so good. Uh, so it's cool. It's coming to PS4. A lot of people are still, you know, pretty annoyed with all the remasters and everything, which I... I understand there, you know, there is a bunch of them and everything, but uh, I'll, I'll do a video on remasters eventually. A lot of people want me to talk about remasters and ports and collections and HD, you know, upgrades and all that blah, 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 cash grab stuff. And I'll do that eventually. Uh, but moving into our next remaster news story, uh, a Korean ratings board rated Gravity Rush for PlayStation 4. Gravity Rush, we all know, is a PlayStation Vita game. It has been rated for PlayStation 4. Um... Usually, you know, when it comes to like, it's not like a confirmed thing, but when games get rated like in Australia or the US or something like, and we have never heard about them before, chances are it's probably real because like rating boards don't rate games that don't exist. So this more than likely is true. Uh, it's not necessarily surprising. A lot of, you know, hardcore Vita fans are upset that Vita's losing, losing an exclusive, which is understandable to an extent, but at the same time, you got to look at Sony's philosophy. Uh, it's not about exclusivity for Sony. It's about making their games like so ubiquitous and kind of opening up their ecosystem. Uh, like with cross buy, cross play functionality with PS4 and Vita. I mean, that's like the whole thing, right? They're not just moving Vita games away from Vita. They're moving PS4 games to Vita. They got that remote play connectivity. I mean, every, there's, it seems like every week a game comes out in the PlayStation Store that's playable across all three platforms, PS3, PS4, and Vita. Uh, one purchase gets you all three versions. It's just something Sony's doing. It's just the ubiquitiness of it, if that's even a word. Um, it's not so much taking away from Vita. It's just having their games on all their platforms. That's just what Sony's been doing recently. It's like been their philosophy for the past few years when they've you know started Vita and started PS4. It's just something they're doing. Um, and another thing was uh, there's was, there was a rumor for the Batman collection too. So Arkham City and Arkham Asylum. Uh, yeah, a lot of remasters. I'll do a video on remasters at some point. So let's talk about a little bit of uh, Bloodborne. This game just came out. We all know it's reviewing very well, but a lot of news stories were happening regarding Bloodborne. Uh, so right off the bat, one news story was that Sony had lost the trademark for Bloodborne. The same way that they lost the trademark for The Last Guardian. They just didn't renew it for some reason. In fact, they lost trademarks for a bunch of other games. Kill Strain, Guns Up. These are games that were like, you know... These, these are Sony-owned games. Like the, 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 These are Sony trademarks, and they just let go of it. Uh, in terms of when I, say, when I say let go, it just means that they didn't renew their, their trademark, and therefore they, they just didn't get it. Um, but they did actually renew it a few days ago. You, it's, it's live on the, uh, the government website and everything that the, they have revived the patents for all their games or the trademarks, so that's all well and good. But one rumor came out because of uh, an Amazon listing. Uh, Amazon France had a listing for Bloodborne on PC. A lot of people got pretty pumped about that. Like, oh man, Bloodborne might, might possibly come to PC. And we all well, and while Amazon France has revealed a lot of games, they have also gotten a lot of games wrong. Amazon France has had listings for a bunch of PS4 launch titles like Killzone and, and Knack and stuff. Like those games obviously aren't PC. Um, so Amazon France is like hit or miss with that stuff. It's just like kind of like how their directory works or something. I don't know, I can't explain it, but they listed Blood Bloodborne for they've listed Bloodborne for PC. Combine that with the news story that Sony lost the trademark and now everybody is convinced that Bloodborne's coming to PC. Definitely not happening. And the reason why it's not happening is because it this is a Sony trademark. Sony is publishing and owning and has worked on creating this game playstation exclusives do not go to pc people need to understand that a lot of people are mis misunderstanding that this is owned by sony the name bloodborne is is more than likely not going to happen the only time that ever happens is when it's a sony online entertainment game and sony online entertainment is no longer alive they sony sold that uh division off and they're gonna start making xbox games pc games everything so they don't do that. You'll never see Uncharted come to PC, none of that stuff. So Bloodborne is kind of in the same area. Okay, so last week we did a news story on the whole Kojima versus Konami thing and what's going on there. And basically with that news story, I told you guys, like, I don't, you know, we don't really know what's going on. We have to wait till more info came out. And then more info came out, like, right after I posted LTPS. The struggles of doing a, vid a video news series. So 
because the second I release a video, uh, sometimes news just gets outdated really quickly. But uh, there's not really a whole lot of new info. Kojima still isn't really saying much, uh, which is understandable. And Konami's still giving a lot of PR announcements and things like that. They're just, you know, being very standoffish and not necessarily telling everybody what went down for real. But the true statement that Konami has uh, announced is that they're going to be moving forward with a new Metal Gear project and that they, a new Metal Gear series of some kind, and that they want to do it with a new, uh, basically a new crew uh new production new development just like new new people because obviously it's not going to be kojima anymore uh konami keeps telling people and insisting kojima is still very much so working on mgs5 which is definitely the case it seems it just after mgs5 he will be moving on doing something else and konami will be uh, you know they own metal gear solid so they'll be moving forward with that but with just new talent so Again, we, we, we don't know like what really went down in terms of agreements, conversations, what Kojima wants to do, what Konami wants to do, or what Konami wants Kojima to do. We don't know. So uh, until the, the beans get spilled, we'll have to keep speculating. All right, so for our main discussion this week, one news story that happened this past week was that uh, uh, Twitch TV boss Emmett Shear predicted that PlayStation 4 and Xbox One were more than likely going to be the last dedicated game consoles on the market. And this is always a pretty big discussion uh, in recent years when it comes to game consoles, how long do they have on the market, blah, 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 things along those lines. So he had a couple of interesting things to say, and I think it'd be good to talk about them. Starting off with, he said, the problem is the seven-year upgrade life cycle doesn't work in the face of the two-year upgrade cycles for every other hardware platform. It's so intrinsically built into how consoles get manufactured and made in the full business model, and I'd be surprised to see another generation. They're going to have to change the form. You can already see this on both Xbox and PlayStation, where there's a tighter upgrade loop for both the operating system and the games. This is the first step towards being able to iterate the, the hardware platform. I could imagine a version of 1.1 product from both Microsoft and Sony, which adds in slightly more speed and slightly more memory, very similar to how phones and tablets work today. I think it's going to look more like a mobile phone market over time. And then he goes on to talk about how, uh, despite that, PS4 and X1 are you know still cool and they did well for us in terms of streaming because they both offer streaming. So, you know the usual PR statements. Um, so interesting thing. I mean, it's oh, like I said, it's always a big discussion how long do consoles have and everything. Uh, Michael Pachter predicted PS3 and 360 were going to be the last consoles. Um, t tons of people think consoles are ending soon. I think the big thing to take away from this is no matter what necessarily happens, uh, it's fairly safe to say consoles are not ending anytime soon. And the reason being is because uh, just look at how the market is. It's definitely not going to happen anytime soon. Sony is selling PS4s at an extremely fast rate. Uh, I can guarantee you they're already already looking at a PlayStation 5 or whatever they plan to do for the next piece of hardware, which it is going to be new hardware. Um, Nintendo has already openly said they're working on new hardware right now, despite the fact that Wii U has been doing uh, very, very bad for them. You know, they've been it's nothing but it's been nothing but an uphill battle for Nintendo, and they are still going to work on hardware. Microsoft spent 2.5 billion dollars on a game property uh, this past year. Um, uh, which kind of tells you right there their commitment to games. I mean, they're they're very committed to games. Um, I think it's more of a question of what are game consoles going, how are game consoles going to change? Because that is the big idea here. They are going to change in some way, shape, or form, in some sort of drastic measure eventually. And when you talk about the long-term future in terms of technology, it's way too hard to even discuss. Some people think, like when it comes to technology, like the opinions like differ by so many different ways because that's how technology moves. It moves so quickly that it's kind of unpredictable and the market sort of dictates all sorts of crazy stuff. Uh, and consoles will definitely hit that point at some point. You know, it's just a matter of when and what it's going to look like. That's where it could possibly, you know, be a toss up in the air of what it's actually gonna be like. Uh, and what I find interesting about uh, his comments are that that is something I could totally see happening. Um, because we know when we, when we talk about the future of game consoles, people always say, "Oh, they're going to go away," um, and the likelihood of what is going to replace them is like streaming games or like a set-top box where Sony will sell like a hundred-dollar box that offers games on a server. So you're still getting high-quality games like the newest Call of Duty or something, but you just never actually physically own a copy of it. You never have to buy the actual hardware that plays the disc locally or anything. You're just always constantly streaming games. People feel it's going to be, you know, that's going to be the future. A lot of people feel smartphones will just end up being the future where you can plug your smartphone to an, into a TV, use a controller, because smartphones are going to be that powerful enough. 
Uh, and what I like about his statement is that I could totally, I could see it happening. I don't know if it will happen, clearly. I, I, will, I won't say anything will happen because I understand that it's too, it's too difficult to really predict what's going to happen in the long-term future. Um, but it's totally true. You know, seven years is definitely too long for consoles. But generally speaking, the average is like five years for consoles. It's just the last generation was seven years with PS3 and 360. But it's understandable to think that you know, possibly speaking, Sony and Microsoft could do something where they release, you know, the next Xbox, the next PlayStation in a way where it is constantly updated hardware wise every like one or two years, the same way smartphones are small smartphones are 600 plus bucks. Uh, granted you, you know, it that involves contracts where you can get them at a much cheaper price and everything, but they get updated, they get updated every single year and they get better every single year. And people actually buy new phones every year and they'll pay full price every year. Now, of course the phone market is vastly, vastly huger than consoles will ever be. So therefore that can't necessarily work on consoles, but can, it can work in a way where you don't lose, you don't kind of, what, what's the word I'm looking for? make the market all disjointed you can't release a playstation 5 and then a playstation 6 in one year and then only have ps6 games that don't work on a ps5 you know what i'm saying it, it's got to work like the phone market it's got to be a way where the next playstation comes out and it's just one fluid platform it gets stronger and stronger and stronger uh and games can constantly still work on that one box though they won't necessarily run as well on an older box the same way that Facebook runs like crap on a really old iPhone and if you have a new iPhone 6 or a new HTC whatever phone you may have the Facebook app is going to run very well and if you play the game or whatever on an older piece of hardware it's just going to suck balls kind of like a PC consoles uh, would basically evolve into PCs in some way uh, not, you know, but it still has the simplicity of a console and the fact that it's one box that you buy every year comes with the plugs and you know, a controller, everything for your TV and whatnot, not necessarily all the innards and interest intricacies of PC and everything. This is just a possibility. This is just conjecture. This is just me saying that I could totally see this happening at one point because you don't segregate that market with a whole bunch of new PlayStations and Xboxes every year. Uh, people can upgrade whenever they feel comfortable enough to do it, whenever they feel like they want to you know, get the higher resolution frame rate that the games can honestly do. You just have an older version of PlayStation 5 or whatever. It's just the possibilities are like really endless with this conversation, but that is totally something I could see happening. Um, what I don't see happening is consoles ending completely. That's just not going to happen, especially considering the fact that all three manufacturers uh, are doing really well. And even when they're not doing really well like Nintendo, they're still going to keep working in this in this industry. Uh, I mean, Sony, I mean, it's Sony Corporation. They got Sony Music, Sony Pictures, uh, so Sony TV, despite the fact that Sony TV sucks. Sony Mobile. I mean, and the, the games industry is the big one of the biggest, you know, breadwinners for Sony right now like they're gonna leave games anytime soon no chance um and you know you can already see sony doing this now with place with with playstation now for example uh they are kind of looking into the future they it, and it's you know you don't they don't even know where the future is going really they just want to start this service they want to see how it does um obviously they want to make profit um there's just a lot of ways it can go Either way, those are some of the news stories I want to talk about with you guys this week. Uh, check out this week's episode of Ryan on Gaming. It's up right now. It's called, you know, Why Do Game Delays Happen? We'll talk about that. Go into sort of the details of game development, how difficult it is, and why multi-million dollar video games never usually hit their uh, release date. Um, you can expect a new episode next week. I got, a, I got a bunch filmed, so we're all good. We're doing videos now, finally. One video I won't be doing, which a lot of people are asking, is a Bloodborne review. I actually, I'm not going to review Bloodborne. I'll tell you why. Uh, I wouldn't feel comfortable doing that. I'm, I'm still relatively new to like the Souls series and everything. I've only played Demon Souls, Dark Souls a few times. I've never actually owned the game and invested like a huge amount of hours into it. And uh, I, I feel like seasoned players of that franchise that are you know understandable with the, the mechanics and everything should be more suitable to review games like that. Like I wouldn't be comfortable re reviewing uh, Borderlands 3 if I'd never reviewed the first two. That's just how I, that's just how I would, that's just, I don't know, it's a personal thing. I just, that's how I work. But for those wondering, I am actually enjoying Bloodborne. This is my first, uh, like, Souls game, quote unquote, that I actually have bought and am really investing a lot of time into. So, yeah, it's, it's awesome. I'm enjoying it. Uh, I'm getting my ass beat, which is understandable. <laughs> I'm gonna try and get that Platinum Trophy. You guys know I love my trophies. I also deleted all my 0% trophies. <sighs> so good to get some of those games off my list. Like, I was never going to earn another trophy in Street Fighter 4, um... 
so what kind of confrontation that's that game's offline now plus the trophies for that game were impossible um there was a bunch of other psn games i tried once and never played again so awesome cleaning up my trophy list thank jesus uh anyway that's about it for me guys uh, i'll see you all next week thank you all for talking with me uh, i'll see you all next friday